G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy for this week's edition of Just The Tips. Today we're of course talking about round 17 after a dramatic round 16. I thought I did relatively well in tipping last week. I got seven uh, correct tips out of nine and uh, unfortunately only moved up 12 spots to about 512 at the moment. So uh, the two I got wrong this week were GWS beating Melbourne. I've naturally tipped uh, Melbourne as I'd imagine a lot of people would have, but GWS, thanks to Josh Kelly, got the job done at the end. And then Dan Houston ruined my other tip with that amazing goal after the siren to beat Essendon. It was a tough one. I kind of wanted to see him kick it, but part of me also wanted to get my tip right. I had tipped the Dons in that game. Seven out of nine, um, I guess I can't really complain about that. We will shout out the the weekly winners. So as I said, I'm 512th in this competition, but the winner of round 16 was Jack B69 Giggity, who got all nine tips correct this round. So well done. But funnily enough, the uh, the margin he got was 70 points off, um, which was a big reflection of uh, Brisbane smashing Richmond, which came as a little bit of a surprise. Obviously, you rarely tip a huge win, particularly when the, that game involves Richmond. But the tipping leader overall is still Christian 2125642, who leads the competition with 100 and a margin of 468. The leader of the fantasy competition is once again Bailey's Brothers, who's got a pretty handy lead there, uh, averaging 2,190 points this season. So well done, Bailey. And the round 16 winner of the game day squad capped competition was a team called All The Way with an impressive 2,529 points. I think I came 12th this round. Of course, guys, if you haven't checked it out already, the game day squad is the league that we've got running, which is a new sort of alternative to AFL Fantasy. So do yourselves a favor, check out the link in the description. It's the top link in the description of every True Footy video. Uh, make yourself a team, join in all the fun. It's all completely free to play. It's good fun. As you would have seen, I do a weekly video talking about my team and, and all the changes that I'll make, but uh, we'll save that rest for that particular video. Before we get into the tips, once again, I'm going to shout out manscaped.com for generously sponsoring this channel. By being a True Footy viewer, you can use our code TRUEFOOTY20 and you can get 20% off and free shipping on any of their manscaped.com products. There's a big variety, uh, be the lawn more 4.0, which is the body hair trimmer, the weed whacker, which helps you get rid of your nose hairs and your ear hairs. And then of course, all these other different products are related to male grooming, you know, your body washes and your colognes and stuff like that. It's all good stuff. So make sure you check it out and don't forget to use the code TRUEFOOTY20 so you get free shipping and you get 20% off. Righto, so let's crack into what should be a good round 17. They're all good rounds at this point of the year, um, but in this, in particular, this round has a, a couple of games, multiple games where I think if either side lose, then it's probably Kurt for their finals chances and we've kind of got as you can look at the ladder here we've kind of got a finals race that still vaguely extends to 15th so this game between Richmond and Sydney at the MCG is 13th versus 15th and neither side is categorically out of the finals race although I am predicting both of these sides will miss at this point to be honest but Richmond at their at 15th and 95% are uh, still mathematically a chance. And this is the first of those games where either side losing this means they're probably pretty much ruled out for finals this year. Richmond obviously coming off a pretty bruising loss to, to Brisbane at the Gabba, um, which was a really disappointing performance, all things considered. Admittedly, you know, Brisbane at the Gabba is a really, really tough ask for, for touring sides. They're undefeated at that ground this year, and they really flex their muscle in this game. And to add insult to injury, Jaden Short has sustained, um, I think with hamstring, I'm not sure, but he's certainly out for this game. Um, uh, which makes things tough for the Tigers. I think they've announced two debutants for this game. Sydney, on the other hand, um, you know, they had a frustrating game against Geelong, which obviously ended in a draw. They kicked six goals, 18. I think the Eagles probably played him into a bit of form because I do think there was a certain energy uh, to Sydney in this game, which suggested they might be sort of returning to their best. They've got a lot of good young players in that team, um, but unfortunately their kicking boots were off. Their radar was completely off. Uh, six goals, 18 tells a story. And it was a game they walk away from really disappointed not to win. So in terms of form line, I think Sydney's comfortably got Richmond here. They beat them earlier this year at a neutral venue in Adelaide Oval. They've beaten at the MCG recently. All the ingredients are there for a Sydney comfortable win. I'm going to say five goals. Then we've got a real doozy here between the Western Bulldogs and Collingwood at Marvel Stadium. Uh, this is obviously sixth versus first, an important game for the Western Bulldogs in the sense that Melbourne just dropped four points last week against GWS. An unexpected four points when you're forecasting the, you know, your ladder prediction. Uh, we expected Melbourne to win that game. And so the Bulldogs and the Ds are now level on points with uh, a fair chunk of percentage between the two sides, which means the dogs need to snatch an unexpected win and they'll be looking at this game as, you know, potentially winnable. Obviously, Collingwood is the best team in the competition or right there with Port. I have to acknowledge Port every time I say that because they are pretty close. But I do think this game is winnable because I think the Bulldogs have the capacity and the ability to beat a quality side if Collingwood is off 
at any given moment. So the dogs are coming off, uh, you know, a pretty good win against Fremantle, another side that was playing for their season to some extent. And uh, the mids in particular flex their muscle late in that game. And there's a lot of firepower in this dog side. Obviously, though, Collingwood, again, it's hard to tip against them, and I'm not going to tip against them because we saw um, them flex their own sets of muscles against the Gold Coast Suns up at uh, Metricon slash Heritage Bank Stadium, and they looked really, really good. So, of course, you know, an off day is probably coming at some point for the Pies, and this could be one of those contenders for a game where they aren't at 100%, and the Dogs are a good enough side to make them potentially pay. So... I'm kind of foreshadowing a little bit of an off day here for Collingwood, but I'm still not going to tip against them. I'm expecting a good game here, though. I think they will make it tough for the Pies. I'll say the Pies win this by seven points in a typical Collingwood win in a close game. The Brisbane Lions then take on the Eagles at the Gabba. Um, this should be a real rip snorter. Uh, obviously, the Lions just smacked Richmond by, what was it, close to 90 points or 81 points, I think it was in the end, proving to, once again to be a very, very strong home side. Um, and this is not a happy hunting ground for the Eagles who are in a world of pain themselves. Obviously, a much more improved performance against St Kilda. I think, I think the odds for the Eagles to beat Brisbane in this game were at $1.51. And after their relatively strong performance against St Kilda at Optus Stadium last weekend. I think that's dropped to $34. So a little bit of respect or, or faith um, paid for West Coast to some extent. Obviously, this is going to be a bridge too far. So I think I think we'll expect a, a pretty comfortable Brisbane win. I don't know if it'll be, you know, 100 points uh, just because I don't know if Brisbane will really bother trying to nail us into oblivion like Sydney did. So I'll, I'll say, you know, it'll be... 77 points. I think that's pretty modest. GWS and Hawthorne should be an interesting one. Obviously, uh, these two sides were a little bit closer in terms of ability at the start of the year. I think GWS have really taken some strides since then. That's clear. Uh, they've won a few in a flurry and then beat the Demons last week on a neutral venue. So clear improvement here for the Giants. The last time they met, the Giants won narrowly. I think the, the Hawks got within a couple of points. It was a really, really good game. Here in Sydney, I am expecting the Giants to to really consolidate their form. I think they're far too good to um, tip against in this game right now. And the Hawks are obviously coming off a couple of poor performances against Gold Coast and Carlton as well. James Sicily is also out for one more week. I know it sounds silly, but if, if Sicily was playing in this game, I'd give him a sneaky chance. But I think you have to respect the Giants' current form line, the, the improvement on Adam Kingsley at the moment. And I do think they should win this game. I think they'll win pretty comfortably, to be honest. I'm, I'm tipping the Giants to win by 45 points and bizarrely stay within touch of the top eight. Then you've got the Saints and the Ds at Marvel Stadium. Uh, this could be an interesting one. Two sides that are fourth or fifth on the ladder, and another side is in really compelling form. So Gilda's form probably a little less concerning than the Ds at the moment. The Saints obviously went to Perth last week and copped an Eagle side that was here to make a point and went into that game with a really renewed sense of energy and, uh, and intent, and the Saints were caught napping a little bit in the first half, but were good enough to sort of change a few things strategically, start beating the Eagles around the stoppages, which is a strength for the Saints, and ultimately I think showed good grit to win that game. They were clearly always going to win it. That being said, their form line up to this point has been a little bit shaky, but they are playing a side in the Demons who have had a pretty bad slump in recent times, and I think Bailey Fritch has also sustained that injury. Clayton Oliver is a maybe for this game, which makes it interesting. He's listed as a test. I think he was listed as a test a couple of weeks ago. Didn't come up. They gave him an extra couple of weeks, and uh, he's a chance for this game. At the moment, I'm leading towards the Ds, uh, regardless of whether Oliver gets up. I think if the Saints have put forward some more compelling form in the last couple of months, um, then I would probably be tipping them against the Ds, but I think the Ds will snap back at some point. You know, they haven't just completely died. They've got some issues. You know, they generated 73 inside 50s last week and kicked five goals, albeit in tough conditions. Uh, the ingredients are still there. I think they will come out firing in this game. And they might not smack the Saints or anything like that, but I'd say they'll win this by, uh, call it 19 points. Power and the Suns then do battle at Adelaide Oval, and uh, obviously the Power are coming off that heroic um, 12th victory in a row, which is incredible, thanks to Dan Houston and uh, you know a number of good players in that game. Connor Rosie also comes to mind. They're probably the form team of the competition right now and uh, coming off that big win. I suppose you could maybe make the argument if you're playing devil's advocate that sometimes when teams win dramatically like that, they don't come out the next week. But the Gold Coast Suns themselves have been pretty average in recent times. They had that bad loss to Carlton uh, and then you know got absolutely mopped by Collingwood last week. And obviously Collingwood's a great side, but the intensity of the Suns was really off in this game. So we could see a response here. I'm just trying to make a case for why it might be closer than we expect, but you'd be a very, very brave man to tip against the power at home. So I think the power will win this by 35 points, but sparing a, a thought of possibility that the Suns could come out 
play tough and make this closer than it should be. But either way, put Adelaide. Then we got the Cats and North Melbourne. And from memory, this is not a happy hunting ground, GMHBA, for the Roos. And uh, obviously they're in struggle town at the moment, having dropped 13 games in a row. There was a bit more of a spark last week. Uh, we saw them play well for about a quarter and a half against the Crows. Um, and they have shown... Uh, an ability to be a bit more competitive in recent times, but in the second half got blown away a little bit. So Geelong obviously had the draw in Sydney in a game where uh, it, it threatened to get away from them. Sydney sort of spared them a little bit with inaccurate goal kicking. In the second half, you felt like Geelong's defense, their team defense in particular, sort of started to handle Sydney a little bit better and at the end of the day, walk away with two points and perhaps potentially a bit relieved with that. But this is going to be a much easier test. With all due respect to North Melbourne, they may come out and be more comp competitive, but this is GMHBA, and I can't see the Cats losing this game. So I think the Cats might flat track this a little bit and win by a healthy, yeah, let's call it 59 points. Then we've got probably the game of the round, Essendon versus Adelaide. Uh, for the second week in a row, Essendon playing a South Australian team, and potentially for the second week in a row, it's game of the round. Um, Essendon obviously heartbroken to lose that game against Port Adelaide when Jai Caldwell kicked that goal. We thought they'd pulled off their own heroic comeback, and obviously they got their hearts broken a little bit, unfortunately. It's eighth versus ninth. The Crows just uh, battered north, particularly in the second half, um, continuing their improvements. Their forward line is firing. It's been firing all year. Tex Walker's leading the Coleman medal. Luke Pedler gets a Rising Star nomination. Things are looking really, really good at Adelaide. They have been a little bit shaky away from home, but I also think they've improved as the years wore on, and obviously it was only a couple weeks ago they nearly knocked off the Pies at the MCG, so I'm expecting a great game here. I cannot wait for this. Either side could win it. It'll be a thriller, but I am going to tip the Crows to win this by 11 points. Then I think this is the final game of the round, Fremantle versus Carlton at Optus Stadium. Obviously a little bit of a weird rivalry with a, a bit of history to it and a history of thrillers. It's 12th versus 14th, and uh, this is another one of those games where the loser can pretty much rule a line through their season. Um, they're probably both hanging by a thread at this point. Fremantle stuck with the dogs for three quarters. They started the last quarter w well, and then you know the m more mature midfield and the, the star-studded midfield that is the Western Bulldogs uh, really took a hold of that game. But Fremantle are a pretty strong side at home this year. They've had a couple of home losses to North and Richmond, but generally speaking, with the home crowd is backing Fremantle, uh, they generally play well, and that's what I'm kind of anticipating from this game. Carlton have gotten their shit together a little bit. They've beaten up on some average teams in Gold Coast and Hawthorne. We've seen the function of that team work a little bit better, but it is a little bit too early to tell whether they've just beaten up on some average teams or they're back into form. Either way, I'm expecting a pretty good contest here. I think we'll see an improved effort from Carlton. Cripps played well last week. Cher is playing really, really well. It'll be an interesting midfield battle in this game. Two strong midfields, or at least with some really strong players in that team. Fremantle last week kind of fell into the same trap of over-possessing the ball and not really having avenues to goal. And Walters and Amos kicked eight of their 11 goals. I made that point in um, my round review, and that will be an interesting concept in this game too. That being said, I think the home ground advantage, I think Fremantle will be too good for Carlton, to be honest. I think it will be a close game though, to be honest, only because these games tend to be close. They tend to have a little bit of drama, I reckon. They're a bit fiery, and I think Carlton may have improved a little bit. But either way, I'm tipping Fremantle to end Carlton's season effectively with a 17-point victory. All right, guys, there you go. That is my round 17 predictions. As always, I welcome your input in the comments section below. As we look at the ladder, I've still got the same top four. Adelaide shooting up to fifth with St. Kilda losing that game. Uh, and the Bulldogs uh, obviously dropping down to seventh. Cats into the eight. GWS is an interesting one there, jumping up to 10th spot. Um, which will be fascinating. Their, their run of form lately has been intriguing. Sydney up to 12th. Other than that, not too much movement on the ladder. Uh, but as always, guys, I welcome your input in the comments section below. Make sure you do check out the sponsors, manscaped.com. Get around game day squad with the link in the description. You just make a team. It's free. Join the league. There's a code down there. You'd be helping the channel out if you did a couple of those things. So as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.